What's up everyone? Matt Montanus here. Finally, I'm back making another video. I know I've been gone for a little while. Um, I've just been busy, got a little fa uh, family stuff, holidays, personal things. But um, besides all that, I am glad to announce though that I am actually developing a new app and it's directed towards producers and engineers, which will be incredible um, for everybody. I got a couple producers behind it. I'm get, reaching out to some engineers to get behind it, and it's going to be awesome. I'll be having more details about that as the app progresses. It's actually almost done being built. Well, I'm actually done almost coding it and uh, designing it and stuff. It's really just now finishing up, making it look pretty, and sending it out for testing. And then after that, well, we'll see what happens. Today I am talking about the R verb, the Renaissance reverb. And I chose this one because it's a very popular reverb to use. I use it a lot actually. I've been using it for like the last five, six mixes that I just recently done. And it's incredible still. This reverb has a lot of functions. It has a lot of, um, you know, you get a lot of control over a lot of different things and the sound of it and stuff. And it's pretty simple. It's not as complicated as like the IR1 full reverb. This one's pretty much simple. Hopefully this helps you guys a lot to understand this. Before we dive into the controls and what does what and how it sounds is you got to understand with reverb, you got to understand early reflections. I'm not going to dive too deep into it, but to make it very simple, early reflections tells you the position and the distance something is. So let's say you're standing there, you hear something. Well, when you hear those early reflections, you can tell if it's on the left side of you and how far back it is or approximately how far back it is or if it's on the right side of you or even behind you. So that's what early reflections are. And it's the first set, the first reflections you hear, which are usually like around 60 to 100 milliseconds. All right. So to dive into this, the first thing you do when setting up a reverb, usually like this, is you set up an aux. And my aux is actually down here, right here. And then I got a send, which is here, you go into my reverb. That's usually how you do it. With the new reverbs and stuff, or even just in digital, is because all of them usually have a wet and dry knob. You can technically just put it on the insert. But when you do that, you're going to have to put it on every single track, and it just takes up a lot of processing power instead of using one of the reverb and sending everything to it. So those are the two ways you can actually set up the reverb insert or even through an auxiliary or an effects track depending on what doll you're on and you will be sending it away and i'll actually just redo it here so here's my vocal and i'll get a send let's create a new track it'll be an auxiliary stereo track and it'll be a reverb and then i would set the reverb here Reverb and let's go to our Renaissance verb right there. And then I'll use this fader to blend it. And when you're doing the send, usually you leave it at 100% wet. Um, there's times where you do bring this down or you'd want to bring that down. That's fine. It doesn't, it's not set in stone that it has to be 100% wet. It's just depending on what you want. So let's pull that off because I don't want it set up that way. I actually have it ascending from somewhere else. And then the second way, like I said, you just get your vocal track or whatever you're using, grab it, and you just throw it on there just like that. And then you just manipulate it with this. And as you can tell, is as soon as I put it on there, though, I switch my track from a mono to a stereo track. See, it was normally with just one fader and now it has the two right here. Once I pull it off, it'll go back to a mono track. So just keep that in mind too. Use a little more processing power doing it that way. The first thing you see here is your reverb type. And that's usually where you want to start off is what type of reverb do you want to hear? And if you hit this menu, these are all the types the R verb has. You got two different sounds of halls. You got a room reverb, the chamber in a church. You got a couple plates, reverse gated, nonlinear, echo verb, and a reso verb. I'll get into those later on near the end of this recording so I can just go over the controls first. Then you got decorrelation here and it goes from zero to six. And what decorrelation is, it's the connection between the left and right channel. So left and right side, the way you pan it. So 
it's not really a big difference, but you could hear uh, subtle subtleties. And as you can tell, these lines here are all your early reflections. So when I switch it, you'll see how they move. And that's how you're going to hear them. They're going to bounce like that. And then let's move down here. We got our pre-delay. And this pre-delay is actually a little different. It's um, really, really cool. Um, this is the only reverb I actually see the pre-delay like this where it can go to a um, negative and it goes to a positive. Um, 160 positive, 160 negative. And the difference between those is when you go positive, 160 or anything up, as you can see is this orange triangle or orange square, whatever you wanna call it, is moving more to the right. And that's your reverb. That's actually like the decay, your, your the timing of the reverb, the decay on when are you going to hear it. So if you put it to 160, you're going to hear the voice and then the reverb after like a little delay. If you go this way, this is actually delaying the dry signal. So when you bring, when you um, move this down to like 50, it's delaying the dry signal that much. So it's like offsetting it from its original time. So it's really cool. You can do some cool effects. I don't really go too much personally into the negative side. I usually stay up and do pre-delay this way. Um, that's just whenever I use it. I haven't had an opportunity to actually go negative, but it's cool. You can mess with it. Then you got your time, and your time is goes from just 0.10 to 20, and you can see how your triangle actually moves uh, on how that reverb is going to react. So if you go to 20, you see that it goes on for a very long time, and 10 kind of just cuts off really fast. And this is showing your reverb tail, so it's setting up the standard time really for your decay because your, de your decay gets a little more like uh, precise on it. So this is just setting up your uh, standard time for the actual reverbs and this is in seconds here so if you go to 20 that's 20 seconds long a reverbs going you go here that's 0.10 seconds long this is your size your size of your reverb on how you're going to sound and as you can tell how your early reflections get squished and they spread out so that's what it's doing when you go to one all your early reflections are super duper close together and when you go to 100 they're all spread out your diffusion and this one's the confusing one for a lot of people. You got zero and you got 100. Half the time, you can't even hear what diffusion is doing. Um, you know, you're messing with it. You're throwing the knob all the way 100. You're throwing it to zero. And you're like, okay, it's not really doing anything. So let me explain this one, what diffusion is and what it's doing. At zero, it's basically saying everything's going to be close. And at 100, it means everything's going to be the most spread. And the easiest way I can explain it is think of like you have a wall. You have a flat wall. At zero, the wall's flat. You speak into the wall, your voice just bounces right back at you. And then when you have 100, you have basically like a lot of blocks on your wall or whatever, rocks. Like your wall is full of rocks. So then when you speak into it, your voice is going to hit the rocks and it's going to spread out everywhere into different directions. So that's what it does. Diffusion at zero, it's just going to be basically like one voice coming back and forth and 100 it's going to spread out everywhere so when you hit into a bunch of rocks so then you got decay decay starts at 0 0.04 and goes to linear and the way this works is decay is saying how your reverb is actually going to fade out so if you have linear it's just going to do a basic fade like this which let's see if i can show you one over here it's going to be a fade like this just fading out and then when you have decay, it's going to fade faster and things like that. So usually it's people leave it at linear, but if you want to get more precise, it's like this. And that's what I was saying is you got your time as how long your reverb is going to be. And then your decay is getting precise on how it's going to fade out. So it's really cool to just keep those two in mind that you have to play with both of them. Now you got these settings and these settings are just gain settings. So like you have your gain, if you bring it to negative 24, you're pulling down the overall gain there. This is input to gain though. It's not output, it's input to gain. So you know, you're saying how much of the voice is going into this plugin. You got your wet and dry signal. So zero is completely dry. There's no wet in there. And 100 is 100% 100 wet. And then you got your reverb. And this is the gain for your reverb. So your reverb is this orange triangle or square, really depending on how you set up your um, time. And that's just the volume of it. And then you have early reflections. And what this is, this is just the volume of your early reflections. So all these are doing gain. Here, you have reverb dampening. 
the way this works is you got your frequency and this one's your low frequencies pretty much you can think of it that way because it goes from 16 to 1600 hertz then you got your ratio which goes 2 and down to 0.10 and then you got your high frequency which goes from 1000 to 2100 what reverb dampening is actually doing it's just setting the knee on the reverb tail on how it's going to respond so you got your knee and it's your low frequencies here on where it should begin and this is controlling the response of it for the low frequencies so it's two multiply and that's what that is doing and then the same thing for the high frequency except it's the high frequencies on how you want it to begin and the response controls this is an actual eq here and this eq is cool to have especially when you want to set something up real quick you know you want to dip and roll off at 300 hertz or 220 or whatever for your reverb so it's cool to have this and then you can do boosts or cuts on your high end and that's all that's really doing is just EQing the reverb. Um, just a tip though, if you go all the way to negative 24, it will have them as high pass and low pass filters if you want to do a roll off instead of just like a shelf. Now we got our reverb types. You have this list of a bunch of reverb types. And with these reverb types, um, all of them sound different, and that's what's great about it. And there's only a few of them, so you can cycle through. If you want a hall, you can change the two halls, room, room, whatever. You got your hall, and it's a big, large reverb, and it sounds like a concert hall. And I'll play that one for you right now. Hot toe Furky with me, baby bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Low max grand. Oh, a little bit about this song. Uh, this song is called Bricks. It's by an artist named Kakamami Jamie. Super talented guy. He does a lot of like theatrical rap where there's a lot of visual and we do a lot of sound effects behind it and things like that. And it's really cool. We're in there recording stomps and runs and keys jiggling and things like that. This song here in particular was actually put into a Lego mockumentary called Brick Madness. So it was very, very awesome for me to work on this song for that movie. Really cool little record. I'll play a little bit of, a, of this verse and then a little bit of the chorus. And then um, I'll have the link in the description below if you want to check it out. Top toe Furky with me, baby bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Low max, grand demanding, and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tarkin, McNardzy. You keep yammer boxing and barking. Catch a blitz at a snark. Alderaan melting apart. Well, well, there goes your subscription to Netflix and Weight Watchers. No escape clause when you're vaporized. So you hear when I pull it to negative, and then I brought this down, then it, it switched where you hear that delay now. That's what I'm saying is that it delays the actual dry signal so you have to actually add some dry signal when i had it at 100 you won't hear it you got to bring it down to actually hear it top toe furky with me baby bubba brass tax double helix transforming to an eagle that's facts low max grand demanding and sharp as so it's really cool if you want to add like a quick slap delay really because that's what it's doing since it's sending you hear the original signal plus this sent signal and that little bit of reverb, the scent dry signal on the reverb. Top toe Furky with me, baby bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Low max, grand demanding, and sharp as a shuriken star. Top toe Furky with me, baby bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Low max, grand demanding, and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tarkin, McNardzy. You keep yammer boxing and barking. Catch a blitz at a snark. Alderaan melting apart. Well, well, there goes your subscription to Netflix and Weight Watchers. No escape clause when you're... So now listen to the diffusion, like I was saying. At these settings, you can hear it a lot better. That's always messing with them. Here at Diffusion, I'm going to have it at zero. And when you hear it, it's going, the reverb's not going to sound spread out. And then when I add it up, you're going to hear it's going to sound a little bit whiter. Top toe Furky with me, baby bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Low max, grand demanding, and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tark. Now let's do it this way. I'm actually going to get the reverb, and I'm going to put it in pre. Top toe Furky with me, baby bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Low max, grand demanding, and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tarkin, McNardzy. You keep yammer boxing and barking. And it's not a lot. It's very subtle on how you can hear it, but you can hear it. And that's what that's doing. It's really cool. 
So keep that in mind whenever you want it to sound a little bit wider or it sounds too wide and too even you can even say it sounds too cluttered in the mix. You can bring some diffusion down so it kind of centers it out a little bit. Let's put this back here. I'm gonna raise it to about five. Oops, let's get my Arbor back out. All right, now let's switch to Hall 2. And a Hall 2 is a little different. As you can see, the um, the early reflections change. So Hall 2, as you can tell, the early reflection, the early reflection has a little fade in right there. Go back. And then everything just kind of gets a little quieter. But to me, it sounds a little bit brighter too. So it's really cool to use if you want like a little brighter reverb. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, grand demanding and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tarkin, McNardzy. You keep yammer boxing and barking. Catch a blitz at a snark. Alderaan melting apart. Well, well, there goes your subscription to Netflix and Weight Watch. So that to me it has a little bit more of the mid range there. But as you can tell, it's a little quieter. It sounds a little bit cleaner than the actual Hall 1 because the Hall 1 sounds really, really big in a bigger kind of hall, like a concert hall. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, grand demanding and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tarkin, McNardzy. If you need something that's going to control the mix a little bit more, sit a little better, you can switch to Hall 2. and Hall 1, you're going to have to, of course, use a little bit of this EQ or an extra EQ to really dial it in a little bit more to take away some clutter. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transform. Very, very cool. All right, let's move to the room verb. That's really all it does is just it sounds like you're in a room. It could be like a bedroom. You can even see in the presets you go to rooms. And they have it right here, bathrooms, bedrooms, pools, garage, phone booth. And it's just really manipulating the settings. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, grand demanding and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tarkin, McNardzy. You keep yammer boxing and barking. Catch a blitz at a snark. Alderaan melting apart. Well, well, there goes your subscription to Netflix and Weight Watchers. No escape clause when you're vaporized. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix. And it's really cool. It, it, it gives you a lot of, um, I guess that one's just in rooms, but it switches to a hall. Um, it gives you a lot of little sounds you can do, like this is a Studio A room. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, grand demanding and sharp as a shuriken. And that's one way to always use reverb too, which I tend to use a lot, especially if I'm using a new kind of reverb. Like recently, I did a full project in Logic. I'm not a Logic guy. They didn't really have this reverb, but actually Logic has a cool reverb called Space Designer, which I really liked. So um, it's really cool to just pull in a preset, you know, like this, Tennessee Theater, or even if you want like a studio sound. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Br and you hear what it's doing, and if it's not giving you what you want, then you just go in there and you just dial in some signs. You're like, oh, okay, well, I want the size to be bigger, a little bit more time, and then just add some pre-delay. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, grand demanding and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, grandma of Tar Then we got the chamber. And the chamber is basically what it is. It's an artificial reverb. Um, Back in the day before there was a lot of like digital reverbs and stuff, they'd have these chambers and basically the way it was made was with a speaker and a microphone. That's the whole idea of capturing that sound. Yeah. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, grand demanding and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tarkin, McNardzy. You keep yammer boxing and barking. Catch a blitz at a snark. Alderaan melting apart. Well... well as you see these early reflections, those are what's changing. So here's the first hall. See how they're spaced out? Then when you go to hall two, it has more of a fade up. And then when you go to room, everything's a little more close together. But, you know, they're still there, a little more quiet. And then when you go to the chamber, they're a little more spaced out again as well. So just keep in mind, it's all about the early reflections on how it sounds. So even like if you need a room sound and it doesn't have a room reverb type called room sound, 
you mess with early reflections enough, you could give it a re reverb type as room sound. Oh Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming. And then you got your church, which is just a big cathedral, you know, a big cathedral sounding. And as you can tell, the early reflections are far. And that's because, you know, usually you're standing at the podium or whatever. And when you talk, it goes super far and big and wide. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. And then you got your plate, which are just quick reverbs, the quick little reflections off metal plates. That's how they made those. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That and then you got plate two is just a little bit bigger. It's just really a different color, but it's the same kind of deal there. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, Grand Dominican, sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grand Moff, Tarkin, McNardzy. You keep... And then you got this cool one called the reverse and it's super awesome you know you can see the early reflections fade up and the way this one works um actually the reverse one is you want to set that one in as an insert so let me just bypass this and let me actually set that up as an insert real quick let's go to insert and then we're going to mess with the time here. Yeah. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, Grand Dominion. Oops. So actually, this is the one that I want to do. Change. Talk yeah. toe Fergie with me, baby Bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, Grand Dominion. Shot the show. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grand Moff, Tarkin, McNardzy. You keep yammer boxing and barking. Catch a blitz at a. Top yeah. toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Low max, grand demanding, and sharp as. Don't want to start a standoff with Barzy. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. And you can hear how the reverb comes up, boom, like that. It fades up real quick and stuff. And that's what that does. And it's really cool sound, really cool effect you can do. It's really neat, you know, when you need some kind of weird thing in the background to throw that on there and do that. Then you have a gated reverb, which is, that's what it is. It's a gated reverb sound. And it's really cool. I'll play it for you. Let's unbypass this. Yeah. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tacks, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Low max, grand demanding and Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, Grand Dominion, and sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grand Moff, Tarkin. Really cool. And as you can see, the DK time, or at least you can hear it, the DK time's a little longer. You got the early reflections are just super tall. Like, there's just a lot of it. And that's what that's doing. The diffusion drops down and things like that. And our next one is nonlinear. And as you can see, the early reflections are super long and spaced out. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, Grand Dominion, sharp as a shuriken star. It's kind of cool. Um, gives you a different sound there. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, Grand Dominion, sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grand Moff, Tarkin. Okay, and then we got an echo verb. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, Grand Dominion, sharp as a shuriken star. I want to start a standoff with Barzy, Grand Moff, Tarkin, McNard. And the reso verbs at the end. And like I said, all of them have their own little um, flavors, colors um, in there. And it's really just what you prefer, how you want to hear it. So the main thing really is just keep in mind the early reflections and how they look or how they sound and then how you want them to work so like now you know how that's going to sound like a reverse one usually for me i always just stick to the halls i love the halls i like the cathedrals and usually when i mix i always just see it as the artists are standing in a big old concert hall and they're performing in front of a thousand people so i always stick to that that's like my main go-to sound is the concert halls i rather go to plates i go to rooms because you know like i said here and in this room, they actually have one called Tennessee Theater, and it's it's actually preset a hall. Top toe Ferky with me, baby Bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. That's facts. Lomax, Grand Dominion, sharp as a shurik. Let's take this off, and let's go to this chorus real quick. You can hear this chorus. 
for molecule of fuck Cause you and everybody you know don't want the bricks I'm talking about the bricks I live for the bricks I'll die for the bricks Jesus Christ rose from the grave on the third day so that he could play the bricks I'm talking about the bricks my man it's the bricks I'm talking about the bricks I live for the bricks I'll die for the bricks I'll kill for the bricks Everybody in the place let me hear you say these are the bricks Toe Fergie with me, baby bubba. Brass tax, double helix transforming to an eagle. Ass facts, low max, grand dominion, sharp as a shuriken star. I wanna start a standoff with Barzy, Grandma of Tarkin, McNarzy. You keep yammer boxing and barking, catch a blitz of the snark, Alderaan melting apart. Well, there goes your subscription to Netflix and Weight Watchers. No escape clause when you're vaporized. Full of doom. Is this the so it was a really cool track, really fun. This one was really awesome to make. The reverb is just, it's just, it just gets complicated and um. That sure just gives you some understanding on what the controls do and why you would move it for this certain sound. I can't tell you like, oh, just set it to this. Like, oh, here's a preset, you know, just choose Tennessee Theater every time. Can't really tell you to do that. So it's just like, find a preset that's close. And then it's like, okay, I want it to sound bigger while you can mess with the time. Or if let's say the sound, the size was down or even the diffusion, like this one set it at 53. Let's go back to that preset. This one says it's at 53.5. You can even just mess with the diffusion at 100 and it'll give it that little more width, you know, spreads it out a little bit. You know, let's say, oh, okay, well, it's the tail is going too long. Well, then you can just mess with the decay time a little bit so that the tail fades out a little faster. So that was really the more point of this video. Don't even worry about reverb dampening unless you really want to. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter, but you can mess with a little EQ or throw an EQ after, like I said. And then now the pre-delay, like I said, it's always cool to have pre-delay on your reverbs, especially these days, so you can really drown your voices in reverb, add a little pre-delay, and it sounds really, really good. That really was the point of this video, so I hope it helped you guys. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me a comment below, give me a thumbs up, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll talk to you all soon. Keep creating music.